Our UI table view works very well for what it does. It displays ordered information in a single column, and we can segue to other view controllers by clicking either on the UI table view cell or the accessory item on that cell. But what if we discover a new space object? Let's say, for example, that Pluto falls, falls back in the favor. Without updating our application, we could never add Pluto, which is such a tragedy. One way to solve this problem is to add a button that will display a new view controller, allowing a user to add the information for whatever new space object we may find. We're going to make a minor change to our table view. So instead of having one section, we're actually going to have two sections. One for our planets and one for any new space object we might want to add. So let's go to the storyboard and make sure that we have our table view selected. And we're going to change the style of our table view to, ah, so I need to make sure I have my table view selected here in my scene outline. And let's change the style to grouped. And this way we'll be able to see our different sections very nicely because they'll be grouped separately. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to the OW outer space table view controller.h file and we want to add a property that's of type or of class ms mutable array so we can write at property it's an object we're going to write strong non-atomic ns mutable array and let's write let's name this mutable array added space objects and we'll do that under our planets property so now what we're going to do is we're going to go and adjust the data source methods for our UI table view controller. So we're going to have to go to OW outer space table view controller.m file. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for the number of sections in table view. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add a conditional. And the conditional is going to say if self.added space objects. And we're actually going to call the count method on this, so I need a left bracket here that we can call count. And I'm going to add my curly braces. And what we'll do here is we'll return two, which basically says if there is actually elements inside of my added space objects uh, array, then what we should do is we should return two sections because the user has in fact added space objects. And let's add an else statement below this. And we can write else. And if there, are, if the user has not added any space objects, let's just stick with our one group or one section the way we've done in the past. And let me just add a return here so that these returns line up nicely. Important to write code that's readable to other developers and um, for yourself as you're going back, it'll be easier to review code. So you want to line things up nicely. So let's now go adjust the number of rows and section method. And what we're going to say here is that if the section is equal to 1, we're going to return self.added space objects count. So what we're saying here is if the section is equal to 1, we want to have the number of rows equal to the number of elements in our added space objects array. And then we'll add an else statement here, and we can use the same return. And again, let's tab this up so these not line up nicely. So otherwise, if we're not in section 1, and it's likely that we're in section 0 in this case, then let's just return the count of the number of elements in our planet's array. So that's great. Finally, we need to update our self heroic index path. And what we're going to do here is we're going to write an if statement after we create our UI table view cell. So let's go below here and let's do it in the after the configure cell comment. And we're going to write if uh, index path dot section is equal to one. Now let's add curly braces. Um, and let's just add a comment for now. We'll say use uh, new space object to customize our cell and then we can add an else statement below this and we'll just put all the information we had before inside of this else statement so we'll leave this the same and what we should do now since we're adding an else statement is we should tab in 
all of these elements so that it, it's really easy for us to see that this is all inside of our else statement here. So I can actually remove that. And we're going to leave the code for updating our cell outside. So regardless of whether or not we're in section 1 or in our else statement, so likely in section 0, we're going to upgrade, update the cell's appearance to look the same for both sections, right? So this code will automatically get applied to our cell. The only specific customization we'll do is based on whether or not we're in section 1 or 0, in which case we'll use a different um, object and update the cell properly. The main concept that this will teach us is how to pass information back from one view controller to a previous view controller in our UI navigation controller stack. The user will enter information and when they press done, the new planet will show up in our UI table view controller. This will be done through the use of protocols